Commander Glen Owen, I'm the uh, commanding officer of 825 Naval Air Squadron, which is the uh, Maritime uh, Wildcat Squadron, the HMA2 AW159 uh, helicopter, um, which we're now bringing into service and uh, converting the uh, from the Lynx helicopter that people have known and loved for the last 35, 40 years uh, to this uh, to this new airframe. Um, at the moment, our focus is training and converting. Uh, Lynx crews, um, bringing them across to the new airframe. But I've, uh, I've just commenced uh, ab initio uh, training, so trainee pilot and observers um, who have come through the training system uh, and have never flown on a frontline aircraft before. So we are now starting to train those individuals as well on, on this new aircraft. Uh, in terms of capability, um, it's a significant step change uh, from the Lynx and certainly the Lynx Mark 8 uh, or the Lynx and any guys uh, that we've known uh, and operated for a significant amount of time. But in terms of uh, how the airframe looks, it does look a little bit like a Lynx, a little bit more modern. The airframe is produced to a much higher standard uh, in terms of life of the airframe. The Lynx was lifed to uh, 7,000 hours. The Wildcat is lifed to 12,000 hours. It's a more robust, crash-worthy airframe um, that does bear a little resemblance to the Lynx, but that's where that similarity ends. Uh, in terms of the cockpit, it's now a glass cockpit. Uh, the sensors are fully integrated, uh, and the sensors really are where we see the significant step change um, over and above the Lynx. The radar system, the uh, electro-optic and infrared camera system, the MX-15, and the uh, defensive aid suites all contribute and combine to give you a very significant capability um, and one that's very easy to manipulate from inside the aircraft. Uh, aviation experts, Royal Navy aviation experts and industry have been uh, co-located all through the development of this aircraft. So the HMI of the aircraft, the human machine interface, um, has had operator expert input from day one. And what that means is the ability to um, manipulate information, to process information, is, uh, is, is hugely improved over what we have had in the Lynx before uh, because we've taken the expertise and put that into the aircraft. Uh, and it's that partnership with industry that's been absolutely key in developing the best that we can from, from the airframe. 825 Squadron uh, was stood up um, after uh, we brought the aircraft into service. We had a trial squadron initially um, uh, to bring the aircraft initially into service, but now to stand it up as a fighting capability, 825, which was previously a swordfish squadron uh, in, the, uh, in the Second World War, and very famous for the Channel Dash, uh, was a maritime attack squadron, so we have stood up 825 with the Wildcat aircraft, and we deployed our first Wildcat in operations in March of this year on board HMS Lancaster. Um, they are still deployed and will be for the rest of the year um, and they too continue to develop and understand this new capability. Uh, the aircraft itself, um, whilst we're training on the aircraft, we're taking every opportunity we can to understand the system, to test the systems and grow our understanding but also grow the capability of this airframe uh, so that for the next 30 to 40 years we can uh, best employ this aircraft either in the small sh single ship environment or the task force environment uh, and get the most out of this airframe. Um, I think it's the step up in capability in terms of the sensors that we will see that greatest development. We have new weapons coming online as well in the way of Sea Martlet and Sea Venom, the um, FAS GW, a future air to surface guided weapon, uh, light and heavy. And that will really finalize the completeness of the package and our ability to tackle any threat, be it ASW, ASUW surface, um, small, medium, large, um, or potentially even land targets. It gives us that full spectrum capability um, for that aircraft um, in, a, in a high threat environment. Um, the force itself, the Lynx helicopter force as was, and now the Wildcat and Lynx force, will continue to transition over the next 18 months to two years to the point where we've replaced all of the Lynx helicopters on 815 Squadron with Wildcat also. And at the end of the transition, we'll have the two frontline squadrons, 815 and 825, uh, delivering operations around the world.
um, with 825 training the air crew and engineers of the future. And that will be our format as we go forward, hopefully for the next 20 to 30 years.